What's going on? Oh, you want to see what I ended up doing all year? A little cool end of the year wrap up? Sure, why not? Hey there YouTube, welcome back to the channel. I'm Adam, I'm glad you stopped by and welcome to my playground. So in this video, what we're gonna do is something a little bit different. Um, I keep saying that, I'm doing a lot of different things lately. <laughs> anyway, I just wanted to go through kind of the accomplishments, the list of builds that I've done this year. Um, it, it has been absolutely crazy. Um, sitting down and writing the list of everything I've done this year on the channel, um, it got kind of ridiculous, to be honest with you. Uh, I may have a problem, so I may have to go into RC rehab. No, I'm not. I'm not. I actually just got two more cars today. But you guys will see them in a little while. Anyway, I've got a list of everything that we built this year on the channel. I'll have a list down below um, of all the different cars. Uh, everyone is on my channel in the playlist, so if you guys are interested in any of them, go back and check those out. If not, you know, cool. You'll get to see them here. All right, so all I'm going to do is bring out a couple, and we'll kind of just do a quick show and tell on each one, and then, because we've got a few to go through, and then we'll just move on. All right, so the first one that kicked us off of the year is the Tamiya Mustang GT4. Um, this one I went and opted for blue instead of the box art uh, gunmetal. Now, don't get me wrong, the gunmetal looks phenomenal. Um, I just thought blue would be a cool race car color, and I think it turned out really well. Uh, then from there, we moved on to the Plasma Edge on the TTOB ch TTO2B chassis. Nice little four-wheel drive, kind of... I wouldn't say entry-level buggy, but it's a more simple four-wheel drive buggy than some of the other ones. Um, really easy kit to put together. Drives pretty well, pushes a little bit in the corners, but I think, you know, tuning um, some front-end stuff here may help. But really cool build. And then, of course, the iconic lunchbox. You know, this is probably one of my favorite cars to drive. Um, this and the uh, Midnight Pumpkin are probably two of my favorites just because it's instant smiles every time you take it out. As soon as those goofy front wheels come up off the ground and this thing starts bumbling across the yard, you know, it's, it smiles from, from the start. So really cool classic truck. All right, from there, we moved on to the Hornet. And this is basically completely stock. The only thing different with this is instead of just painting it black, I went with the lame flake on it first. So it does have some metal flake to it, but still retains that kind of black classic look. And then we move on to the Grasshopper, which we've left this guy bone stock. We still have the little 380 motor in there. I will take out the 380 stock and put in the uh, Sport Tune 380 into this. So we'll be doing that soon. Um, I think with these, the lighter the motor you can keep it, the better it drives. When you put the big heavy five quarter in there, it starts doing the hippity hoppity even more than it does now. And then the Beast, the Black Edition Clockbuster. Yeah. Now this, I ended up selling off a bunch of, you know, parts and pieces and junk I didn't need anymore and stuff I've been holding on to for quite a while and ended up, you know, selling enough stuff on eBay that I was able to buy this one. So I I had an old Clodbuster. I've converted it to a, um, a crawler and I really wanted to get a true stock Clodbuster back in and be able to drive it around and, you know, this thing will never not be fun. Uh, just having it bumbling around in the yard and doing Clodbuster things is just too much fun. All right, then we moved on to the first ready to run of the year, the Armor Granite Mega 550. Um, while this thing had a little bit of overheating issues, some fans solved that problem. And, you know, if you're looking to just get into the hobby, these Arma four wheel drive trucks and cars are just tough as nails. Um, I have bounced this thing off of concrete walls, rocks, uh, landscaping timbers. It just kind of just flails off of them and keeps on coming. So if you guys are in the market for something new, ready to run, that's super tough that your kids may not tear up in five minutes, um, may look into something like these. Uh, the, now the, fi the 550 line is the slower version. So if you're just getting an RC, maybe get that. And then you can upgrade this guy to brush this later. The, it, the guts of it are pretty much the same. Anyway, great. Great fun truck just to go out there and, and smash and bash on and not have to worry about breaking anything. 
Then we moved on to the Wild Willy 2. Now, if you like building kits and you like detailing kits and painting and stuff, um, this guy was a blast. Um, you know, all the little details on here, and it just, it was a fun, fun build. And again, wheelie machine, um, just a fun little guy to go tumbling around the yard with. Then we went with the frog, and yes, I put on the little antennas just because they're cute. I like them. But the Tamiya frog, uh, it's just a, another classic uh, RC car by Tamiya. Um, you know, we're just running stock on this, stock 540, stock shocks, everything on here is just as it comes in the kit, and it's a blast to drive. Alright, moving on. Alright, so then we moved on. Uh, this was a vacation build, so I built this down at the beach when we went on vacation. Um, you know, super simple kit, no painting required, the body was already cast in the perfect blue color. So, if you guys are thinking about doing something like this, check out, you know, the kits like these, the Holiday Boogie, uh, the Rising Fighter, there's a couple other ones out there, even like the Black Edition guys. Um, you know, just keep it simple. Just a handful of tools, batteries and charger and a remote, and you're good to go. So this was a great fun build. Um, I love taking the slow motion of this on the beach, tearing up the sand, and I've already ordered my um, beach build for this year. So that'll be coming up in a few months. So after that, we moved on to the Chrome Edition Midnight Pumpkin. I keep wanting to call it a lunchbox, because it looks like a lunchbox. It's the same chassis as the lunchbox. Basically different body, that's all. Um, but this guy is gorgeous. Um, the Chrome Edition is really neat. It's not a true bright silver chrome, even though it's glaring the hell out of the camera. Um, it's kind of like a black chrome, if that makes any sense. Um, and when I got it, it looked kind of greenish. Um, but once you put the stickers on there and everything, all that equals out, and you know it actually is a really good looking truck. Still a very, very fun truck, um, but this one is kind of a shelf queen, just because I don't want to tear up the chrome. So if I do want to run something, I'll run the lunchbox. This guy gets a lot of abuse, and it still looks in really good shape. Um, it hasn't turned over too much. Um, but this one does get driven fairly often. This is kind of my go-to. This is the Grasshopper 2 Black Edition, and it's just a fun buggy. Um, you know, once I put those oil field shocks in here, it helps out, a, I won't say a lot, um, but it definitely helps out with the oil field shocks on here, um, just to kind of slow the suspension down. So it kind of books around a little bit, but it's nowhere near as, as, back and back and back and back and back and back and back as the, the original hopper was. Still does its fair share though. All right, so this is when the year started getting interesting for me. So, went to the hobby shop and I was going to buy this little guy. So I had two of the original Losi Mini T trucks. Um, one I kept as a truck, and one they actually had a reproduction or a aftermarket body for it that you turn into a buggy. Now turning that into the buggy was really difficult because you had to cram so much stuff in one little spot. But it works, and it looks it looked really cool. But it was kind of cartoony looking. Now this is a true beautiful little creation recreation of Losi's actual race buggies. Gorgeous, gorgeous little car and actually performs super, super well. So if you guys are looking for anything to run inside, if you have a big unfinished basement or anything for the uh, over the winter, grab you one of these guys. You won't be disappointed. This thing rock and rolls. While we were at the hobby shop, um, I was talking to the wife and she asked, you know, what other cars I may want. And there was a few I pointed out. And when she saw this, she decided, hey, I'm going to buy you a Rift. And I was super excited. And then I got it home and broke it in seven minutes, and then I fixed it, and I broke it again in about ten minutes. So this is not my favorite purchase of 2021 at all. But it's still here. Eventually it will either move on or it will get some more upgrades and run again. But for right now, this turd sits on the shelf. Now, let me move this guy out of the way. This is where the year got interesting. So I got an email from the RC Elf. And if you guys haven't heard about the RC Elf, evidently you're not watching enough YouTube. Um, he has been all over YouTube helping out all kinds of smaller channels um, by providing RCs to them. Um, he reached out and asked me what I wanted. And you know, I've wanted one of these guys for a long, long time. And next thing you know, boom, here we go. So, huge, huge, huge thank you to the RCO for this and all the other help you've given my channel, as well as all the other channels out there. 
But anyway, this was an awesome, awesome build. Um, I loved every minute of it. It's not as hard as I thought it was going to be. You know, I was very intimidated by getting this. I thought that this was going to take, you know, months and months and months and months. Um, but really, you know, just take your time with it. Put all the thread lock in where you need to put thread lock in. And just build it as the instructions go. It's really not that difficult. The transmission looks intimidating. Just follow the instructions. Super simple. Uh, painting it took quite a while. Um, there's a lot of stuff on here to paint. And this semi-transparent paint did take quite a while to paint. But came out gorgeous. And I absolutely love, love, love this truck. It is the showpiece in my collection. And every time people come over and see it, they just are amazed with it. All right. I guess we got to move on. I want to keep looking at it. But I guess we got to move on. So when Axial released the images of the new Bronco that they were releasing, I immediately was, oh, that, that has to happen. So we got the teal version, and I, yes, I do have Jason Voorhees in there, and Woody Harrelson. Now, Jason's driving because Woody's drinking, um, but this truck is just so cool out of the box. All the scale details, the doors open, the pedals, the gauges, it's all just so cool as it sits. And it has so much potential to add extra stuff to, which I do plan on doing at some point. I want to get a light bar for it, um, possibly some rear lights to hang down to shine back, um, you know, stuff for the bed. You know, I just haven't gotten back around to this guy yet. It is a fun little drive. Now, you're not going to be able to go out there and pound through the courses. Like, you know, if you just have a honcho and it, this guy is a lot more top heavy, um, yeah, side hilling and going up hills is a little bit more technical with this truck. And with the straight axles, you know, you don't have that that TRX4 advantage of having portals and all that stuff. So this truck will actually make you a better driver. It makes you think a little bit more of where you're going to put it. Um, now, another surprise from RCL is he sent me this ground pounder. Um, you know, this is one of Red Cat's older cars at this point. Um, they really went outside of the box with some of their stuff. And, um, you know, I, I give them kudos. Driving this thing is, is hilarious. With the different four-wheel steer options, you know, you, you never get tired of driving it. Um, upgrading it, I will be digging into this sometime early next year to try to see if I can upgrade it and fix a couple of the quirks with it. Um, I think if we can upgrade it, maybe put a better speed control and a little bit stronger motor in here, um, it would be even more fun to drive. But motor size is very, very critical with this because the, it's like smashed in there tight but anyway this is a fun little you know just go out and blow off steam for 15 20 minutes you know doing some crab walking and, and stuff like that um the four wheel steering on this makes this truck for sure and then along with that he sent over the holiday buggy and if you, you have kids or if you haven't been into the hobby for a while and you're looking to get a car to build pick this guy up um you know fairly cheap um and it's one of their cheaper kits um, super simple to build. Uh, the instructions in it are about the most thorough instructions you're going to find in RC. You know, it goes through every little detail in it. Um, you can paint as much as you want or as little as you want. It's still going to come out cool. Um, so, yes, the Holiday Buggy, it is a very fun little car. Um, I do have some oil field dampers for this guy, which they'll be going on soon. So, I'll make a video on that, kind of comparing those. And I'm actually got the um, pinion on order, the correct pinion for the 540 motor, because um, I don't want to run it too much with my kind of bodge job there of getting it to run. But holiday buggy, very, very fun. All right, and then the gifts kept on coming. Uh, also from RCL, he sent over to Thunder Dragon. Now, at first, I was a little bit, not hesitant, but I've never been a huge fan of these cars just because they're so far out there. They're so far away from, you know, that classic buggy style. But when you get this guy in your hands and you, you take a look at it and you admire it for what it is, you really do fall in love with it. And this and the Fire Dragon coming up soon are probably two of the most fun cars to actually get out and drive. The four-wheel drive systems in these cars work great. Um, you know, they handle great. Uh, it's just, it's, it's been a pleasure to drive. Um, so Thunder Dragon, big thumbs up on that. Mud Blaster 2, another one that wouldn't have been on my wheelhouse, but turned out to be a very cool kit. Um, this chassis is very unique. Um, I, when I first got the sticker set out, I was like, oh my God, that is tacky. 
And then once you get them all on here and everything goes with the paint so well that, you know, I can't imagine having this look any other way than what it does. It just came out super, super cool. And again, a very fun truck to drive. Then I bought the Neo Fighter. So basically we now have the Neo Frog. Um, so I kind of threw back the homage of the pink and the stuff on here, but kept some of the blue details on here. Um, this is a really, really great uh, entry kit as well. Super simple to build. Um, I think two thirds of the kit goes together with the same exact screw size. So you don't have, you know, 15 different things of uh, screws laying on your bench. You basically have a big handful of one size screw and then a few other ones for, you know, specific things like the shocks and stuff. But really, really great, um, easy kit to build. Really, really inexpensive uh, for the kits out there and a great driver as well. Now it's a little bit light on the front end, but that's easy enough to add a little bit of weight up there. But you know, this guy runs really well, really, really well as, but that guy really, really runs well. And then it just keeps getting better. Um, all three of these were from the RCL. So I got the Fire Dragon along with the Thunder Dragon and um, the holiday bug and stuff. So all those came in at the same time. Um, again, super, super great kit. And, you know, the Fire Dragon and the Thunder Dragon both have very unique bodies, um, but I love them both. Um, just the, the subtle differences between the two, and it, it's just, they're super cool. So, you know, at that point, I thought, man, I'm the luckiest guy on the internet right now. And then he sent me an email saying he was sending this. So at that point, you know, I was beyond words. I had, I, I must have given you, given him a million and a half thank yous by now. But this Nova Fox is a gorgeous car. You know, everybody says, oh, if it's it's almost as good as looking as the Hot Shot and some of the other ones. I think this car is absolutely gorgeous as it is. It's very reminiscent of that RC10 kind of body lines, and you know. I just think it's gorgeous. Uh, so it's literally like the, the Hot Shots, you know, sexy sister. You know, this is just a beautiful, beautiful car. And I love the way this guy drives. Um, I got the GT2 motor in here and it just runs. And I, I just love it. So now, flabbergasted. Now we move on to absolutely have no idea why in the world I got so lucky. But then he messaged me with a picture of a wrapped up or with a box of the Tomahawk. And I was like, oh my God, that's such a gorgeous car. And then I noticed that it had a little two atom um, sticker uh, post-it note on there. So once again, he sent me a new car and I had no idea even remotely how to thank him. This is a gorgeous, gorgeous car from top to bottom, front to back, side to side. I don't know how many hours I've wasted staring at the box, the contents of the box, the, the bits and pieces, the assembled chassis, and now the assembled buggy. Um, it's, it, there is nothing about this I don't like. Everything about this is just top-notch, beautiful, well-engineered, well-machined, gorgeous, gorgeous car. And I can't thank you enough. Thank you. Ah, I don't want to put it down. All right, and last build for 2021 was the uh, Wild One Blockhead that I bought. Um, I was a little late to the show on this one because mine was uh, back ordered a little bit further behind everybody else's. But, you know, this was a really, really cool kit. And this is probably the most scale buggy that Tamiya has ever made. Um, it's, it's wide. Like the buggy itself is wide, um, it's short, it's narrow, it's got an actual proportionate size driver in there. You know, this looks like something that you would have seen on you know, Baja or the Mint or something like that back in the day that was actually running in that race. So, you know, gorgeous, gorgeous kit. It was a fun kit to put together. A few little quirky things. I'm still not a fan of this crap, but, you know, it's what I'm going to do. I, I don't have an injection molding machine to fix it, so it, it is what it is. Um, but yes, this is a, a, a great little buggy and I'm really glad I picked this up when the back orders came out. And when I saw this come out, when I saw the release images of this, I had wanted a wild one for a while. Um, but when I saw this, I immediately was like, okay, that has to happen. 
And my wife doesn't like when all you other guys put out release videos um, letting, letting me know what's coming down the line. But I just blame you guys. And an honorable mention for this year is not a new car by any means. This Stampede is probably one of the oldest cars that I have. But this year we decided to breathe new life into it for the third or fourth time now. And turn it into Project, Project Resurrection. So... Basically, all new electronics, um, went through, beefed up everything we could. Um, I still need to get some sort of indestructible slipper clutch for this, or I'm going to have to swap out the brushless system that's in here for something a little bit less um, wild. The 4000 that's in here, um, it's, it's just cooked everything I've, I've put in. So I don't want to lock it just because I don't want to shear off everything in there. So I need to find out something in here. It's going to be a little bit tougher or put a little bit uh, less crazy motor in there. But I wanted to throw this in here because I thought this was a very cool build and I enjoyed, you know, breathing some new life back into the, this one. So while everything this year has gone really, really well, I've built a lot of different cars on this channel. And, you know, there are a lot of special ones out here. The Tomahawk, the Grand Hauler, the Fox. You know, a lot of those cars are, are ones where I didn't think I was going to get um, just because they're a little bit outside of the price range I normally go for. Or, you know, I've, I've got a long list of other ones ahead of it. They're a little bit cheaper. Um, so I've done super, super well this year, and I appreciate all your guys' support. So RC Elf has done a lot for the channel, hands down. But it's you guys out there that are watching the videos leaving the great comments, liking the videos, and all that stuff. It makes me want to come back and keep sharing all this stuff with you guys. So thank you guys wholeheartedly for an amazing 2021. I'm hoping 2022 gets even better and we're able to do more cool stuff and share more cool stuff with you guys and keep interacting with everybody in the comments. It's been awesome. Now, with that said, <clears throat> there's been a lot of great content here, um, but there's been a lot of stuff I've done elsewhere um, that I'm even more proud of than anything sitting behind me. And most of that is all the cars and truck or all the trucks that we've sent down to Operation 11 Charlie. Um, if you guys don't know about Operation 11 Charlie, please go down in the description. Stop the video here. I don't care. Go down in the description, find their link, go to their YouTube page, go to their website, learn more about them. Um, if you have any questions, you got to feel free to ask me. I'm not directly affiliated with um, Operation Love and Charlie at all. I just love helping those guys out. Um, but please go to their website, contact them, ask more questions, see what you can do to help out. They're a great, great organization. They're doing wonderful things with RC cars. And the five trucks that we were able to send them this year, so we were able to send two in the beginning of the year and three towards the end of the year. And I'll put some pictures up here while I keep rambling on. But, you know, I couldn't have done that without the help of my friends um, here that helped raise all the money to get to buy all that stuff. You know, there's no way I could have supplied five full trucks with all the running gear and all the accessories and all that stuff ready to go for them uh, without the help of my good friends here. Um, so everybody out there that's watching, thank you so much for the support you've given me to, for me to be able to do that for Operation 11 Charlie. That is the best builds of the year by far. Um, seeing the pictures of those guys out driving the trucks that I built um, and that you guys have helped um, pay for and supporting me uh, for doing is, is just the best thing ever. Um, you know, I, I, can't, I can't put words behind it. Um, seeing, seeing somebody's face light up like it's uh, Christmas morning, uh, getting a new truck, is just an awesome feeling. And I really, really hope we can do more of that next year. Um, so, guys, it's been an amazing year. I want to thank everybody out there for watching. I want to thank you all for the amazing comments and support you've given me. Um, and I guess, like I said, I, I wouldn't be here um, doing this if it wasn't for you. I certainly wouldn't have spent the absorbent amount of money on all of these cars and trucks this year if it wasn't for YouTube. And um, I appreciate you guys kind of giving me that drive to keep adding to the collection and uh, keep making me want to do more. I really appreciate it. I'm glad everybody seems to like all the videos. I really appreciate all the positive feedback. Anyway, I have blathered on it long enough. This video is probably three and a half hours long by now. Everybody out there, please be safe this New Year's. Everybody out there, have a wonderful 2022. Be happy, be healthy, be safe, and I will catch you guys next time.
Bye. But then after that, we moved on to the Chrome Edition uh, lunch. So after that, we moved on to the Chrome Edition lunch. God, why? You're not a lunchbox. <laughs> really, 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 really. You're stupid, Adam. <laughs>